Does it really say in the Bible that being gay is a sin? Was the word homosexual added to the Bible afterwards? Does it really say in the Bible that being gay is a sin? Biblical text doesn't introduce the word homosexuality until the 1900s. And so then you have to go back and you have to look at the original manuscript, which frames it from a different perspective. Where have I heard this before? The word homosexual was never in the Bible. It wasn't in the Bible till 1946. And the word it replaced translates to pedophile. Wonder why they did it must be a mystery. Was the teaching that homosexuality is a sin just added to the Bible in 1946? Well, here's the hard truth that might surprise you. The word homosexual wasn't even in the original Bible. Dun, dun, dun because the original Bible was not written in English. Okay, so we need to understand the word that Paul actually uses here in 1 Corinthians 6 and 1 Timothy 1. The word he uses here, and pardon my pronunciation, is arsenikoitai. It's evident that Paul coined this word by pulling from two passages in the Old Testament from Leviticus 18, 22 and Leviticus 20, 13. He merges two words together, arsen, which means man, and akoitai, which means bed. So it translates to men who bed with other men or something similar. And to answer that other lady, there's no indication here that Paul is referring to pedophilia, especially because the word that Paul coined was taken from two passages in the Old Testament in Leviticus that are clearly condemning homosexuality. Now, I've heard some people say that it's only like six verses that condemn homosexuality out of 31,000. You'd think God would have made it more clear or talk about it a little bit more if it was that important to him. But the truth of the matter is that it's not just six verses that condemn homosexuality. It's the whole narrative of the entire Bible. The whole Bible narrative is entrenched with God's design for man and woman and how that illustrates a higher reality of God. Man shall leave his father and his mother and become one flesh with his wife, not man shall leave his father and his mother and become one flesh with another dude. Now, another accusation that I've seen being brought forward is that they just weren't aware of these type of relationships back then. Back then, it was just all kind of abusive or pedophilic um, and they weren't really sure about kind of monogamous homosexual relationships. They didn't really know about that, so that's why it wasn't put in the Bible. But what about other writings from the same time period that highlight these kind of homosexual relationships, not just between men and, and boys, but between men and men? The truth is they were aware of these relationships. And still at every point, it mentions men and women, husbands and wives. It's not a mess up on God's part, not seeing how the world would adapt and change. And, and he's like, oopsies, oh man, I should have seen this coming and changed the Bible so it would be more accommodating, it was God's plan from the beginning. He knew what was coming. So it talks about giving the natural affection of a man to a woman or a woman to a man. Well, what is your natural affection? Is your natural affection to a man or is your natural affection to a woman? We are divinely everything that God wants us to be. I think that's awesome. I've never heard that part of it before. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And man likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and, and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. We don't get to redefine what God calls natural. Yeah, there might be things that feel natural and intrinsic to who we are and how we are created, but ultimately we need to consult with the creator to see his design and command. If it doesn't line up, then no, it's not how we should just be. And we need to keep in mind too that because of Adam's sin, we have inherited a sin nature. That means we have a propensity towards sin, that our natural inclinations aren't towards what is good, but actually towards what is evil. At the same time though, there are some desires that are natural according to what God has commanded that man, a man would want to be with a woman and that a woman would want to be with a man. But that's why we need to consult with what God commanded. This idea that we are divinely everything God wants us to be is so like the opposite of Christianity. Only when we submit our lives to God, when we repent, when we turn to Christ in faith, can we be put on a path to be where God wants us to be. Apart from that, we are in rebellion against him. We are not divinely everything God wants us to be in that context, not even close. In a moral sense, we are not enough, but that's what makes God's grace so amazing that he was enough for us that we could put our faith in him and be forgiven and be given new life. What are your 
thoughts on conversion therapy? Uh, I think that's the stupidest thing that um, somebody could ever do, and I hope that whoever does that, I hope that they find a guiding light. People can't be converted from who they authentically are. Now, obviously, I'm against any kind of physical or mental abuse, and when that comes to conversion therapy, if that's a part of it, of course I'm against that. Nobody, no Christian, true Christian, would want that for anybody. But now the lines are being skewed because when we talk about conversion therapy, that's what you think. You think of some sh sort of shock chair that somebody's being shocked in and they're being forced to kind of like look at certain things and then give certain answers and it's kind of a horrific idea. But is that what we're talking about here? Well, in Canada last year, there was a conversion therapy bill, or that's the narrative that was connected with it, that it was a bill against conversion therapy. But the truth was it was against um, clinicians or counselors or pastors helping other people walk through their same-sex attraction and help them find healing or or clarity around it. Ultimately, they wanted to work through it. And maybe that was also their gender expression and what they identified as. Any kind of dissenting voice, any kind of opposition that was stated was seen as abusive and as wrong. And it has to be 100% affirming all the time. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think that's abusive. Not just when it comes to the homosexual lifestyle, but any lifestyle that somebody is in and they want help help to get out of, like having those people around them that they can give their input and insight and help them guide them to what God has said, that should be something that we really value and not want to snuff out. When he talks about this idea that you can't change somebody from who they authentically are, I understand that a lot of people that have even come to Christianity from the homosexual lifestyle, their desires have not necessarily changed. But when we talk about who we authentically are, even for me as a, like from a non-Christian to a Christian, I thought I was one way, but God changed me into somebody new. That's what God does. He makes us into a new creation. That is God's, that is, that's his business. And so when we say, oh, you know, I'm just who who I am and I'm divinely everything that God wants me to be already. It's just not true. We get ushered in by God's grace, but then he enacts a transforming process within us and a, and a transforming process to draw us more like him. But in order to get there, in order to be that, we need to ask God for humility, to humble us, to say, God, I submit everything to you. Help me to desire what you desire and transform me into your image. What he calls us to is to no longer connect our identity with our temptation, but rather to seek an escape because he wants will provide that for us. The amazing thing about God is that he brings us from who we think we are, for who we think we authentically are, into somebody completely new, the, the person that he created us to be, and he empowers us by his spirit to walk in that. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge thank you to everyone on Patreon. It is because of your guys' support that I can continue on my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily. If that's a mission you want to get behind, click the link in my description and sign up today. It would be a huge blessing. Until next time, I'll see you later.